How's it going Chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. A couple of videos ago I shared the questions that the Patreons gave me to ask professional distillers and other industry people in Austin, Texas when I go and visit soon. Uh, I also shared my answers to those questions where appropriate. This week I'm doing the same thing but with the questions that came from the Facebook group. Welcome to Stiller everyone, I'm Jesse and this is the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. Alright team, so um, that video wasn't that that super popular and really it was, um, you know, it was made specifically for the people that are, that are long time viewers of this channel. I think, I think it's important to do that every now and again. But anyway, it was fun, I had fun doing it. Um, <clears throat> got some fun comments in the comment section on that video as well. And generally I think it's kind of fun to do it before uh, actually getting to Austin as well. So. The last one was the questions that came from the Patreons. This is the video that came from the people on the Facebook group. Now, if you don't know what the Facebook group is, now I get it guys, I know Facebook isn't for everyone, that's totally cool, um, but it is what it is. If you do use Facebook or you wanna join the Chasers of the Craft Facebook group, there will be a link in the description down below. Just make sure that when you sign up, you answer the questions, or Randall, or myself, uh, with, the, with the mods on the group. One of us will make sure that you don't make it into the group, basically. <laughs> we want to make sure that, that it's a group full of like-minded people and we defend that pretty pretty staunchly. So make sure you answer the questions. I know for the Patreons, I was sort of giving people shout outs by name for the people that gave me the questions where, where it seemed applicable. Uh, this is a closed group. I'm going to honor that and uh, there won't be any names involved. But if you're the person that, that asked me the question or multiple people ask the same question sometimes, if you're one of those people, thank you, you know who you are. One that was interesting to me is uh, where should I go to learn? And the reason behind it is if I've only got five minutes with someone, if I can only ask them a couple of questions, I can only learn so much from, a, from them at that point in time. Um, but if I, I can get a piece of string off them, if I can you know, find somewhere to go, if they can tell me where to go to learn properly, that's worth a lot more over, over time, which is a freaking cool concept. And, and I subscribe to that way of thinking as well. So top marks to the, uh, the person that dropped that question. Um, I'm interested to find that out too. Uh, so for me personally, I think you guys know the answer to this for me is um, the forums have been great, but you do need to, um, it can be hard to sift through a, a whole lot of knowledge uh, and also a whole lot of random discussion that doesn't mean much of anything you know, to kind of get to the nuggets. It's great as a community, don't get me wrong, but I just mean if you're just looking for the information. Um, books have been interesting as well. Random sort of scientific papers from here and there that I've been able to find. Um, and a couple other YouTube channels as well. But that really is about it. Uh, and it would be, it'd be great to see if there's other resources that we as the home distilling community aren't, aren't tapping into. Next up, next up is how do they handle, how do they handle deciding what oak to put something into, or the, the barrel sort of management for a new spirit, what's the process there? Uh, that is super, super interesting to me because, because I don't have a whole lot of long-term experience there and I haven't you know, sat down and, and worked with someone a lot that has. That's the advantage of being sometimes in the commercial world, right, is that, that you get walking and, and you, you work in a distillery where you're, walking, you're working next to the guy who's been there for 30 years and he worked next to a guy that was there for 30 years before him or at a different distillery for that amount of time. Um, so I haven't had the, the luxury of that. So that's an interesting one to me. To me, it's um, the forced aging stuff has, has been quite helpful for that. Um, discussions, you know, like the, the, the little bit that we got from Harry at Still Austin last time I was there, talking about the different proofs of barrel entry and what they give back. Um, that, that's been quite influential to me. And I guess, I guess now I'm starting to build up a little bit of a, um, a taste memory of what happens when I do certain things. But I, one, once again, that's only been over, you know, two years, so. <laughs> this is an interesting one. What is the biggest screw up you ever made and how did you go about handling that? <laughs> or making it not quite as big of a screw up. On the commercial level, obviously this is, the, the stakes are much higher for this sort of thing. For me personally, honestly I think the biggest mistake I've made is like leaving a ball tap open, you know, dumping something from a fermenter into the boiler and you know, having the, the, the ball tap left open. Maybe I lost three or four liters before I realized what was going on and managed to get to the tap. Yeah, breaking things, dropping, oh god damn. Um, these glass measuring jars, 
shocking at breaking those hydrometers, little things like that. But I'm guessing that uh, between all of you out there, there are probably some um, interesting ones from a safety point of view, learning points that we could, you know, potentially learn along with you. Uh, funny things that have happened and just like heartbreaking things that have happened. So by all means, guys, if you want to share your stories in the comments down below, have at it. <laughs> How much whiskey do you consume on a daily basis? That is a really interesting question, especially if your job is to be blending whiskies, tasting things coming off the still, whatever it happens to be, you know, like if you're in the industry, you're probably gonna consume a little bit on the job every now and again, right? For me, actually, for me, interestingly enough, I think I've said this on the channel before, but I drink less now that I've got spirits all over the place than I did before. It's a weird thing, actually, we're just talking about that with um, guests today. Having so much spirits, having spirits accessible to use has normalized my drinking of a spirit or a cocktail in more situations than was normal to me beforehand. Like coming home from work and just having a whiskey straight away or, or making a gin and tonic straight away or something like that, you know, like might be something that some people see as, oh, you know, how much does this guy really drink if that's what he does when he first gets home? Um, but the thing is that I very seldomly go past that now. It was almost like if I had a box of beer or a bottle of spirits in the house before that, it was like, oh wow, we've got something to drink, let's drink it. You know, and I'd, I'd, I'd sink half a dozen by two o'clock on a, on a Saturday afternoon sort of thing and then didn't think much of it. Now it's almost the opposite. I enjoy sampling it, I enjoy tasting it, I enjoy uh, thinking about it and exploring it and deciding on different things I can mix it with. But that doesn't often lead to, to more than that, which is interesting. How does a person that has no experience and you know no specific way into the industry do it legally in America? This is a big one for me because you know if you're a home brewer in America, you can brew in your shed for years, hone your craft, walk into a craft brewery with some samples, blow the socks off them, and at the, you know like ask for an internship or something, right? Or you can do the same thing to create some kick-ass samples share it with an investor or share it with uh, someone you might want to partner with. It, it, it just makes sense for brewers. But if you're making spirits, you, you, you can't do that, right? So what do you actually do in the industry? How do you get into it? Uh, and in my mind, I, I kind of feel like it's one of those things where you just need to, you need to find another way in. So there's the good old fashioned, I'm gonna sweep your floors every day this month and, and, and I just wanna be a fly on the wall and be able to learn something off you. Or, oh, I heard you've got a bottling coming up this week. I know you need extra hands. I'm not gonna charge you anything. I just wanna be here. I wanna see what this place is like. You know, give value to them so you can take value back as well. Or of course you can, you know, if, if you've got another skill somewhere else, so you're a, you're a engineer, you're a, a kick-ass welder, you're an accountant, you're marketing, photography, you've come from the brewing world and you've got fermentation and, and mashing experience, you know, bring something else to the table uh, that, that you can offer to the, the person that you want to get experience with to, to sort of circle back around and make it valuable for everyone, if that makes sense. I think honestly, the other way to do it is just to, um, just go balls deep from the beginning <laughs> and go down the legalization route by yourself. But man, you need some, you need some coin to set that up. So it's a tricky one. Now this, this next question is super specific to those that have continuous stills, so if I get the chance to bring this up, I will um, with, with someone. But the question is, how do you make cuts on a continuous still? Because you're, you're constantly just pumping new product into the still, right? And um, because of that, it's not going to be, time's not going to be a main vector that's coming out of the still to separate things by. So the question is, you know, like how do you separate heads or tails from something that doesn't have a beginning or an end to the run, potentially. With my limited knowledge of the equipment, of the technology, essentially it turns into the different levels of plates uh, being where you sample from. So you can take product from plate 10 instead of plate 12, and you know that plate 12 is generally at the very end, the very top end of your, you know, that's sort of the very beginning of hearts as we would call it. Um, but then above that it turns into heads and you know you, you get the idea right that's my limited understanding of it i would love to know more here's an interesting one i don't know how many of you guys watch the the moonshiners tv show i've never actually watched a full episode but but someone suggested i asked the distillers do you watch the show what do you think of it um 
you know, just do, do you have any comments on the show? And that's really interesting to me because, yeah, like I said, I haven't watched it. I probably should. I've thought about actually doing like a reaction video to an episode, which could come, kind of be fun. I'll, I don't know. I'll, I'll sit on that one for a little bit. And if, if you want to see it, let me know, guys. I have watched one of the spin-offs where one of the guys goes and, you know, helps out distilleries that are on the brink of going out of business or whatever the main storyline is. I watched about three quarts of one episode. And I was actually surprised with the amount of pretty solid knowledge from my point of view that was in that. It wasn't all, it wasn't all um, drama TV for the sake of drama TV. There was a lot of good stuff in it. At, sa at the same time though, it's just, there's so many things that's just like manufactured bollocks. So if you're watching those shows to, to learn how to distill, I, I don't know, man, it's pretty hard. If you've got no idea and you've got no experience with a still on running products, how do you know what's bollocks? And, you know, people just talking shit for the sake of making the episode more entertaining and, and how much is actually solid information? I don't know. As to whether or not how great they are at doing what they do, I, I can't comment because I, I haven't seen it and I sure as heck haven't tasted it. But uh, yeah, like I say, it could be fun. Here's a question from a Texan that is kind of in the industry. What do you strive to improve on your product? Uh, that is a, is a cool question because to me it's open and it allows them to sort of interpret it as they will and take off on a, on a path that, you know, might get some more information out of them. For me personally, what I have been working on is entry proof for uh, spirits going into the barrel, you know, into glass jars on oak. Uh, because of what I learned last time I was in Texas, uh, what else have I been doing? I've also been working from a, more from a YouTube point of view. I've been trying to figure out how I can incorporate more all grain products into videos. And the, and the problem is that they take so freaking long, you know, like it'll take maybe a month to make a video. And in that month, I've, I've got to be making this video, but I also have to be making four other videos at the same time, you know what I mean, to get to get them out. So i been sort of trying to think how I can do that, and uh, I think I've got some plans coming up for when I get back, so we'll see how that goes. What distilling rule do you like to break? And that, I think that's always an interesting question for anyone making anything, really, like artist, writer, maybe not accountant. <laughs> you know what your accountant breaking rules so I don't know. Um, but I think it's interesting for people that are, you know, artists of some descri description. Uh, and the reason for that is it's the old adage of, you know, you need to learn all the rules before you can think about breaking them. And once you find we have just a little bit of leeway on something, that might be where that magical last 10% comes from. I don't know. I don't know what I would say I'm doing to break the rules. I think I'm still trying to figure out how to follow the rules properly. <laughs> I don't know. I think for me, uh, it would be mostly things like... The gin I just made, right? So making something and trying to just push the envelope a little bit in terms of what the definition of a spirit is or the ingredients of the spirit. Um, because as a home distiller, I don't have to worry about labeling requirements or naming conventions or anything like that. I can throw whatever I like into whatever I want and call it anything I like as well. So I've got, you know, wiggle room in, in style guidelines, if that makes sense. Mark, I am going to name you because I know you'll be cool with it. Uh, and this is a this is a banger of a question in my mind because it, it, it's meaningful for us as home distillers and for the commercial side of things as well. And it links the two together. And that is, do you follow the home distilling world at all? Forums, videos, groups of people in any way, shape or form. And does that inspire you or influence what you do at a commercial level. It's cool for me because I'd love to know if people do. That'd be cool, right? That'd be awesome to know for us that uh, commercial distillers are watching along with these videos and talking with us on, in the comments. And we just don't know who they are because they're, um, they're not shoving it down our throat that that's what they do for a living. Um, but from the other point of view, th this is one of the main reasons that I would really love to see the hobby legalized is I think it would open this up and it would almost give like a resurgence into the spirits community, uh, the commercial spirits community in terms of creativity, in terms of trying different things, in terms of um, being able to fail, fail fast and, you know, just try lots of different things as a, as a, almost like a hive mind. <laughs> and lastly, and lastly, this one is, uh, this one gets contentious. Where do most of the flavors come through 
from a whiskey? Is it the spirit, the new make spirit, or the barrel? Whoo! Yep, if you ask the, uh, the brewer or the distiller, you know what they're gonna say. If you ask the cooper, you know what they're gonna say. I don't know, it's an interesting one, guys. You, you can't deny that there's a lot of flavor that comes from wood. So let's take the ingredients out of it as much as we can and compare a vodka to a wood aged vodka. That changes a lot. There's a lot of flavor in there that you wouldn't have beforehand, right? Yes, a lot of flavor is coming from the wood. But then if you comp compare a vodka to a new make whiskey, I don't know, I would probably argue there's more difference there than there is in the first example. Maybe, I'm not sure. And I guess it depends whether you're asking the question, here's a whiskey, did most of the flavor come from the barrel or did most of the flavor come from the, the raw ingredients? That's one question. And then the other question is, here's two different whiskies that taste distant, different, distant. <laughs> what is the biggest influence in the difference between the two whiskies, you know, given that they are whiskies? You know, there's less room for differences there. Um, I don't know, it's an interesting one. I, I, I don't know, I think both are important and I think it depends the type of whiskey and really what you're asking as a question. But I know it's a good way to start fights sometimes, so that's always fun. <laughs> So before we get any further, I need to thank the Patreons. Thank you a bunch, guys. And with me right now, probably traveling as this video goes out, uh, I have to say thank you so much, guys. You're the reason that I get to do this. You're the reason I get to travel. You're the reason I get to meet these cool people and then you know bring videos back to you guys. So thanks, guys. I, I appreciate it. Also, thanks a bunch to the people on the Facebook group for dropping some questions. Uh, it's, it's awesome to have some inspiration going into you know meeting people like this. Awesome to have an idea of what you guys want to know, you know, through through me as a proxy to be able to ask the questions for you. So I hope to be able to do that for your team, I really do. So just remember that this video and the next video, probably the video after it as well, are going to be scheduled. Um, I'm going to be on a plane, driving around in the rental car or traveling back again on a plane. So just be aware guys, if I'm not answering comments and stuff, that's partially why. I'll be back to, you know, usual, usual schedule soon after that. In any case, team, I had an absolute blast. This one's for the crew that already know what to do at the end of a video. So thanks heaps, team. Keep on chasing the craft. See ya.